Welcome to this video in which we will do nodal analysis uh, with a dependent current source. Turns out that adding the dependent current source doesn't really complicate this much compared to the original circuit, but you'll see how it goes. Okay, so the first step in doing nodal analysis, as always, is to choose the reference node. And as I do 99.8% of the time, the reference node will be the node at the bottom. Step two is to label the node voltages. So I have a node here, and I'll label the voltage at this node V1. And I have a second node here, and I'll label the voltage at this node V2. Okay, two steps done, two steps to go. Let's apply Kirchhoff's current law to node 1. And this is just a straightforward application of what we've done before. So I can just write down the equation that I get by inspection. I have V1 um, times 1 over 2 ohms plus 1 over 1 ohm minus V2 times 1 over 1 ohm is equal to 3 amps. Okay, so that's done exactly the way that it would be um, uh, in any problem. Okay, so let's look at node 2. Node 2, I will have minus V1 times 1 over 1 ohm plus V2 times 1 over 1 ohm plus 1 over 3 ohms. And now I have a current source. This current is 3 times Ix is the current that's leaving the node due to a current source. So if it's leaving the node, it will be negative 3 Ix. Okay, so what we've done here is we've written down the node voltage uh, and just plugged in the value that we would get for the current source. Now the thing that we need to be a little careful about is that we don't know what Ix is. Ix is another unknown. So what we need now is a third equation that allows us to solve for Ix in terms of uh, V1 and V2. You'll notice Ix is the current from here to here which would mean then that uh, Ix will be equal to V1 over 2 ohms. Okay, it's the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistance. So we actually have now three equations and three unknowns. Uh, the unknowns again are our two node voltages and Ix. So we can just plug this into an equation solver and that will give us the answer we're after. So if I go to Wolfram Alpha, um, we can put in our equations. We have V1 times 1 over 2 ohms plus 1 over 1 ohm minus V2 times 1 over 1 ohm is equal to 3 amps. Now, um, those of you that aren't doing this as an example certainly will uh, realize that the 1 over 1, you could just write 1 there or not multiply it at all. But since I want to be painfully precise, I'll leave that there. The second equation is minus V1 times 1 over 1 plus V2 times 1 over 1 ohm plus 1 over 3 ohms, and this then is going to be equal to minus Ix. And then we have Ix is equal to V1 divided by 2 ohms. And we tell it to do computation, and uh, oh dear, it turns out 
that Wolfram Alpha is a little goofy. When I put IX in there, it thought it was in uh, the imaginary uh, square root of minus 1, which is often represented as I. So I'm going to get rid of the I in both cases here. Just call that current X. It'll save us from some goofiness. Okay, so what this tells us then is that V1 is um, 8 thirds volts. V2 is 1 volt, and Ix is 4 thirds amps. So we can go back to our circuit, and we have then that V1 is 8 thirds, so that's 2.667 volts. V2 is 1 volt, and Ix, the current um, that is controlling my source is um, four thirds, which is 1.33 amps, which makes sense given what V1 is. So there you have it. Um, we've solved the circuit. We have discovered what the voltages at each of the nodes are, and we've discovered um, what the uh, current controlling the current controlled current source is. Now suppose, just as an afterthought to make sure it's clear how we would do this, suppose that I'm also interested in finding this current I through the 1 ohm resistor. Well, that's not hard to do once I know the voltages. This I would be V1 minus V2, that's the voltage across the 1 ohm resistor, divided by 1 ohm. So I plug in the values that I have for V1. I have 2.667 minus 1 volt over 1 ohm, which would give me 1.667 amps. Okay. So if you do nodal analysis, again, you will find the node voltages. But if you have to then find a current, you can find that current using the node voltages. And it's pretty easy. So hopefully um, this example has made sense. And uh, we'll see you later.